let's just get started and jump in with a question from from Luke, who who wanted to know how does the Veterans Court work and who may benefit from this program? Well, I can tell you the Veterans Court and the Mental Health Court are set up a little bit similarly because they are post adjudication, meaning that you're charged with a felony. Your lawyer is sitting down with you and says, well, have you ever served in the military? And veterans have a different set of issues than I think just mental health court or just drug court. And that is because a lot of their substance abuse and or crime is related to their service. Now, they don't get a null process in this program, which we hope to eventually change because it should be similar. They do the same thing, except for they plea into veterans court. They get their treatment at the VA. So the Judge Blanchard, who is over that court as well, he will come. They will meet with them each week in court and they will talk to them about their progress, make sure they're taking their medication because they're, a lot of them are struggling with PTSD. They're struggling with nightmares. And the interesting thing with the Veterans Court is that we will have people in drug court who you'll find out are veterans and we will transfer them into the to the Veterans Court because the treatment when they're sitting in group is different. They're talking about veterans issues. You know, it's very difficult to have served three tours in Iraq, you know, and have done some things there that you can't sleep at night because of. So you need to be around people in your peer group who can understand that commitment to your country coming back and coming back and having that commitment to your family. And their charges may be a little bit more violent. That was one thing that when we did the training with Veterans Court up in Buffalo many years ago that they noticed. And so it's a separate court post plea, but they kind of do the same thing. They're going to go to treatment at the VA. They are going to address those underlying issues that's causing them to get in trouble with the law because most veterans do not get in trouble with the law. And I can give you some examples of clients that I really felt like if several years ago we would have had a veterans court, you know, they would not have ended up in prison because their families didn't know what to do and they didn't know what to do. And if there's time when we come back, I can tell you about <laughs> two cases. That would be yeah. really good. One is I represented many years ago as a public defender. If you guys remember the guy who uh, drove his car into the mall to pick up his girlfriend, who was no longer his girlfriend. I don't know if anybody was here at that time frame. <laughs> Well, I had the pleasure of representing him. And the family was like, look, this has been going on for a long time. We don't know what to do with him. You know, we don't spend enough money on mental health care in our in our country. And so there was nowhere to put him. And they were like, well, can you just put him in jail for 10 days? This is literally for 10 years. This is what the, the family, you know. I said, okay, but there was no there was no program then. And I think back to that young man, I'm thinking, wow, he could have gone into this mental health court, he could have been accountable to the judge each week, somebody just talking to him, making sure that he was on his meds and it would have supported the family. You know, I had another client who, it was a very serious case and he had shot somebody, but he was basically having PTSD problems and he ended up in prison. And I think if he would have had the opportunity to do the mental health court or the, the veterans court, it would have worked out. And so those two are a combination where you, have got to be on something and you need some help monitoring to make sure that you stay on your meds to do it. 